I'm here today at a microwave conference and exhibition and I thought it would be a really good opportunity to find out what microwaves are all about. A little bit about the properties, what they're used for and in fact anything uh, about them. And we've got lots of experts here so I thought it would be a really good opportunity to talk to some of them and use their expertise, their knowledge and find out more about them. But the first thing to find out is what are microwaves? What actually are they? Some people say that microwaves start at about 300 megahertz and upwards, but my definition is that they're really more like a gigahertz going up to 30 gigahertz, which is where millimeter waves start. The real defining difference with microwaves is that the wavelength becomes comparable in dimensions to the circuit that you're working on. So every element of a circuit has physical dimensions that, that create not just a lumped element, but resistance, capacitance and inductance in every part of the circuit, which means you have to use some very different design techniques to get the results that you're looking for. We've seen that microwaves and millimetre waves are located between about 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz, but it's worth getting a feel for where they're found in relation to other sections of the radio spectrum. As Helen Duncan mentioned, although the definition for microwaves strictly speaking means that they start at 300 megahertz, people tend to use the term for frequencies starting around a gigahertz or more. It can be seen that microwaves are well above the AM broadcast bands in the long, medium and short waves in terms of their frequency. They are also above the VHF bands used for FM broadcasting, some television and also many point-to-point -point communications. Then, above the microwave section of the spectrum, we find the millimeter waves. These can be found between 30 and 300 gigahertz, where the wavelength of these signals is measured in millimeters. With microwaves and millimeter waves, people are heard to talk about various bands like L band, C band, X band, and a number of others. You quite often hear people talking about bands like X band and KU band, KA band. These are all different parts of the spectrum within the frequency domain. Um, so different applications will have different parts of the band. So X bands typically used for radar, for example, KU band, K band, are satellite bands, and we've seen them push up in frequency as well to things like Q and V band now for higher higher data routes, and even E band for satellite as well, um, which is 71 to 86 gigahertz. This can all be rather confusing because there are several systems. It's confusing even to those in the industry. So check out the links in the description of this video for a much fuller description than we can give here. Having seen where microwaves and millimeter waves fall within the radio spectrum, it's worth taking a look at some of the applications as this gives us further insight into what they are and why they are so useful. One, one of the traditional applications of uh, microwave and RF would be radar. So obviously invented in the UK and, and still very, very strong for the UK and still produce a lot of radars, particularly for, for aerospace in the UK. And um, from the new side, when we start looking at new applications now, we're looking at things like 5G and future comms and 6G beyond that, and, and the, high, the super high data rates that are required for that. And also things like autonomous vehicles, um, obviously we'll need to be communicating between car to car, car to infrastructure, and they'll all need microwave links to actually talk to each other. And also we'll have the radar around it as well to protect the cars, so it sort of ties back together for the traditional uses. When I first joined the industry uh, some years ago, most of the applications were focused on uh, military and aerospace uh, uses. But over the years, commercial communications and commercial radar, etc., have become more to the fore. The other difference is, in the early days, a lot of the uh, funding for R&D came from military sources, whereas now we're seeing that the real impetus for innovation is coming from the commercial sector. Although these are some of the most popular uses for microwaves and millimeter waves, they are also used in many other applications and systems as well. So it's worth finding out a little about their advantages so that some of the reasons for their use can be understood. Yeah, microwave and millimeter wave are really useful anywhere where we need large data rates, so anywhere where we need to move lots of data from one place to another. So that can be backhaul for telecoms, where we need to get lots of data back to the data centers. It could be from satellites to get, to get data back to the ground stations. So 
anywhere where we need lots of data flow effectively. There are there's several uh, advantages of microwaves. One of the key advantages of microwaves is that in the higher radio frequency spectrum, it's less used, and so there's more of it that can be used, and we can use wider bandwidths, and therefore we can get uh, faster data rates for users, say, for in the uh, cellular communications area. Another aspect of microwaves and millimeter waves as well is the way in which they propagate or travel. Another advantage of microwaves, or some would view it as a disadvantage, but the fact is microwaves are attenuated more at the higher frequencies and travel less far. That can be a, an advantage and also a disadvantage. It's an advantage from the sense if you're trying to do some kind of secure communication, it's not going to propagate into areas where you might not want it to. Obviously, if you're trying to do something where you're broadcasting to a large audience over wide distances, that's going to be less of an advantage. Without going into a complete new video on radio propagation at microwave and millimeter wave frequencies, it's found that the signals do not travel as far as those on lower frequencies. They tend to travel over a line of sight path and they are absorbed to a much greater degree by objects that may be in the way. So trees, buildings and the like will all significantly attenuate these signals and to a greater degree at higher frequencies. At millimetre wave frequencies, the atmosphere also tends to absorb signals more, with peaks of attenuation at various frequencies caused by the gases in the air. As a result, microwaves and millimetre waves tend to be used for strictly line-of-sight communications and often over much shorter distances, dependent upon the exact frequency. The wavelengths of the microwaves and millimeter waves has a significant effect on the antennas that are designed and used. So one of the great things about microwaves, since uh, we do have the high attenuation at the higher frequencies, the antenna structures at the same time are becoming smaller, so we can pack more antennas into the same amount of space. And that opens up possibilities for doing beam forming to focus that limited energy in the desired direction to overcome those higher path losses. So as we move up, up in frequency, what we get is beams that are very directed as well. So you get very narrow beams at high frequency. We also see a benefit from the size of the disc at higher frequency. So we get much higher gains at higher frequency for the same size disc. As we move to E-band, for example, we get a lot more gain out of an E-band half a meter disc compared to some of the V-band or below. Although there are lots of advantages to using microwaves, there must be some disadvantages to the use. It can't all be positives. The disadvantage is that the wavelengths are approaching the size of the components being used to generate them and therefore the accuracy with which you make them becomes much more important, therefore harder to produce. Cost is another issue which has had a major impact on the use of microwave and millimeter wave frequencies. Microwave systems, whether it's test equipment or the actual devices themselves, are typically more expensive than they are at uh, lower frequencies and uh, over time that cost is going to come down as we get more devices and more use of them and it becomes more uh, commercially available. Originally microwaves were associated with things like waveguides and various unusual forms of semiconductor device specific to microwave use. These days however the technology has advanced significantly. Waveguides are still used in a few areas but the semiconductor technology has really advanced. So there's a variety of different semiconductors used. Um, typically as we get higher in frequency we're talking about compound semiconductors. So that could be gallium arsenide or gallium nitride, indium phosphide as well. What are the advantages of some of these compound semiconductors? So frequency of operation is much higher for, for gallium arsenide and, and gallium nitride is getting up in frequency bands. Gallium nitride gives you a lot more power density compared to gallium arsenide so you get more power for the same size chip um, which, is, which is very positive for some applications. That's our quick introduction to microwaves and millimetre waves. For more information, check out the description and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video. Thank you.